to Irwin in Trouble with Father. This is the Irwin family. Stu, principal of the high school, family man, head of the house of Irwin, and his pretty wife June, mother and housewife. Then there's Joyce, body soxer by profession, and Jackie, an individualist by inclination. Hi, Stu! Oh, hello. Well, this is quite an honor, a visit from the mayor. Come on in. Uh-oh, wait a minute. Would you mind waiting out here a couple of minutes? I'm sneaking this upstairs. It's June's birthday next week. Oh, I can say what I got to say right out here. I'm going to ask a favor of you, of course. You know us politicians. <laughs> yes. Uh, well, would you mind holding this then in case somebody looks out the window? Sure. <laughs> kind of bulky. It's a purple dress for June. You bought a dress without your wife seeing it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, what? Oh, nothing. Does matter. But let's get back to the subject. You know about the drive for the new wing on the hospital. Yes, yeah, yes. Yeah. We've arranged to have Dr. Bertoldi speak at the Sunday meeting. You've heard of him, the neurologist, Dr. Gino F. Bertoldi? I've heard the name, yeah. Well, he'll arrive Friday night. we got to put him up over the weekend. Now, we can't send a man like that to the Commerce Hotel. Mm, commerce isn't bad. Yes, but not for a man like that, Stu. A famous nerve specialist. Then there's a question from what fund to pay for it. So, we've thought it over. Now, you take a man like Dr. Bertoldi with a string of degrees a yard long after his name. Why, there's only one man in town can hold conversation with him. Yes, but I know, as mayor of the town, that I should entertain him myself. But my boy... You are the one for the job. I'll just step aside. It'll be an awful lot of work for June. But, Stu, it's an honor. Mm, I don't know. Do you realize, Stu, that we're putting on an extra school bus next year? Yes, and it's badly needed, too. Town's got to pay for the buses. It'll mean an extra appropriation. I get it. Stu, you're not connecting one with the other, are no, you? No, 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 no. I'll speak to June about it. I'm sure it'll be all right. Fine, fine. It's an honor, you know. Yes, I'm also sure that we've been on it. Well, so long, Stu. Uh, Ed, just a minute. That dress wouldn't look very well on you. The dress wouldn't... Uh... Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Always a laugh, you know. you carrying upstairs? What? The way you went thumping up those stairs, it sounded as if you had the weight of the world on your shoulders. Oh, June, you're imagining things. Hmm? Oh, I have uh, something to ask you, but don't do it if you don't want to. What is it, dear? Would you mind if we had a school bus sleep here over the weekend? Stuart! Oh, I meant Dr. Bertoldi, the neurologist. He's coming to make a speech for the hospital drive, and Ed Harvey thought we might put him up. Oh, that would be nice. I'd love it. Now, don't do it if it's going to be too much work. Oh, it's no work. The girls can help me, but... Dear, I'm worried. Hmm? Don't you think with the night classes and everything, you're doing too much? Now, what makes you say that? Well, you've been so nervous lately, stumping up and down the stairs and calling Dr. Bertoli a school bus. Oh, that, I, that wasn't me. I didn't call him a school bus. It was the mayor who called him a school bus. I'll be in the living room. Call it when dinner's ready. Result of an automobile accident, eh? Two months ago. 
No other effects except this Shakespeare Bacon fixation? None. Mr. Lewis is normal and quiet in every way until somebody mentions Shakespeare. <laughs> Curious the way one small thing will set an unbalanced man off, huh? You know, a great many people in this country hold with the theory that Sir Francis Bacon actually wrote Shakespeare's plays. Not as vehemently as Mr. Lewis does. Uh, I guess he does get excited, but even so, he's harmless. I notice we haven't tried hypnosis. No, sir, we haven't. Lewis outside? Yes, sir. Show him in. Are you uh, put through a call to a Mr. Stuart Irwin? Pleasant 81437. Thank you. Good afternoon, Mr. Lewis. Sit down, won't you? <clears throat> Mr. Lewis, I trust you're enjoying your stay with us. It's all right. Good as any other place. Except for a few extremely ignorant, unread, illiterate, and totally uninformed people. Indeed. And just who are these people? Him. Call him a doctor. Look at him. He's an elk man. Going around claiming that a certain person actually wrote the plays and sonnets of that great and modest man, Sir Francis Bacon. You think Dr. Harris believes that Shakespeare... There was no such person. I see. Then uh, you believe that Shakespeare... If you mention that name again, I'll sit here and think about you. Hmm? Very informative, Doctor. Mr. Lewis, will you look at this closely for a moment? A satisfactory response, Doctor. We'll just put him under lightly at first. Later, we may try to hold him in the hypnotic state for periods of 24 hours. But I think you'd better leave the room first. He seems to be antagonistic to you. Wake up! Wake up, Mr. Lewis! Hmm? Oh. What happened to the milkman? He had to leave. Oh. Deliveries, eh? <laughs> Hello, Mr. Irwin. I'd like to thank you for your kind invitation. Not at all, Doctor. We look forward to your visit. I'm afraid I'll get there an hour later than I said. Four, thirteen, Midvale? Yes, Mr. Irwin. I'll be seeing you. This evening, then. Goodbye. Very satisfactory response. Sleep. 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 Mr. Irwin? Yes, yes. Good evening, Dr. Pateau. Good evening. <clears throat> you got here a little earlier than you expected to, Doctor. Well, my last case wasn't as difficult as I thought it would be. Oh. Uh, complex, but uh, I finally induced the patient to go to sleep. The bedside manner. <laughs> <laughs> well, the best of us sometimes give it a whirl. <laughs> come in, come in. Thank you. <laughs> What lovely children. Thank you. Uh, this is Joyce. How do you do? Hello. I'll tell Mother that Dr. Patoli is here. Thank you, darling. Really? And this is Jackie. Charming, charming. Aren't we the bright-looking little lady? Uh, she skipped a grade last year. Oh? And this year I'm going to be in the class play. Now, Jackie, no boasting. <laughs> well, it isn't every girl my age who can memorize a long part like the one I do in the school play. I'm only nine, though I look bigger. Indeed you do. <laughs> the lunatic, the lover, and the poet are of imagination or compact. One sees more devils than vast. Daddy, why is it okay to cuss when it's Shakespeare? <clears throat> when it's who? Shakespeare. <clears throat> uh, 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 my poor child, uh, Mr. Irwin, are you a man of education allowing your daughter to voice such a misguided belief? I take it, Doctor, that you're an adherent of Sir Francis Bacon. Aren't you? Well, I admire all the things he actually wrote, but I'm certainly no Baconian. 
What's Baconians, Daddy? People who have the theory that Sir Francis Bacon was the one who wrote all of Shakespeare's plays. They're nuts. Jackie. Shakespeare's name is on the book. Uh, young lady, when I was your age, we had a saying that children should be seen and not heard. All I said was... Uh, Jackie, you'd better go help your mother. What? I said go help your mother. Oh, all right. Yeah. There is the madman, the lover, all its panic, see Helen's beauty in a brow of Egypt, the poet's eye in a fine frenzy rolling death glance from heaven to earth, from earth to heaven, and his imagination bodies forth the forms of things unknown, the poet's pen... Jackie! How easy is a bush supposed to bear? By William Shakespeare! Sorry, Doctor, but you know how children are. Yes. Uh, tell me, Mr. Irwin, have you noticed any other vicious tendencies in the child? Oh, come now, Jackie can hardly be called vicious. She's just a normal little savage, like most children her age. Perhaps. I have a patient now, a lovely young girl of 30, a hopeless case. We learned something of her background. The same vicious tendencies in her Doctor, early Doctor, I must ask you not to keep using the word vicious in reference to my daughter. I'm sorry if I've offended you, sir, but as a layman, you must remember that child psychology is a mystery to you. I've been a teacher most of my life. I think I might have learned a little about child psychology in that time. Perhaps, perhaps. But when the subject happens to be your own daughter, you're inclined to be uh, prejudiced. Mm, that's true enough. Now, for example... If the child is vicious, she... Doctor, would you care to wash up before dinner? Now, you may not recognize these vicious tendencies, it's but... They... right at the head of the stairs. First door to the left. And here are your bags. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Where's Dr. Patoli? Washing. And the sooner that fellow gets out of the house, the better. But he just arrived. I don't care. I don't like him. What happened? Nothing, nothing at all. I just don't like him. Oh, well, don't be so vicious of him. Vicious? Do I have to like him? Hush, he'll hear you. Let him hear me. Daddy, was there really a Shakespeare? Yes, there was. Daddy's little girl. Daddy's own little sweetheart. <laughs> Come on into the dining room, honey. I'm going to tell you all about Shakespeare. <laughs> little girl, uh, wouldn't you like to have a nickel to buy some candy? No, thank you. I never eat candy. Oh. The quality of mercy is not strained. It droppeth as the gentle rain from heaven. Gosh, that Shakespeare was a wonderful writer. A little girl, why do you have to say... My name is Jackie. Very well, then, Jackie. Why do you have to keep saying that that, that man wrote it? Because Shakespeare did. How do you know? I know it. But how do you know? Because my daddy said so. And he's the smartest man there ever was. He reads all the time. He's read a million trillion books, I bet you. Oh, he reads a lot, eh? Half the night long, the light shines in my mommy's eyes. Uh, that must tire him very much. My daddy never gets tired. Just sometimes he's a little more cranky than others, and then you better not use his fountain pen. Oh, I see. Very instructive. Would you like me to read out loud to you? Uh, no, I don't think that would be a very good idea. What a charming picture. Oh, hello. Do you have children of your own, Doctor? Mrs. Irwin, do you think I'm crazy? Huh? About children, uh, I mean, uh, of course, I uh, always have been. Oh, yes, of course. Uh, we must have Jackie recite for you. Oh, uh, well, if we must, we must. Oh, we can't. I promised Jackie I'd take her downtown and buy her an ice cream soda. Oh, goody! Stuart, what are you thinking of? Strawberry. With vanilla ice cream. You know Jackie isn't allowed sweets after dinner. She can this time. It's a special occasion. A special occasion? She's having a soda in honor of Dr. Bertoldi's visit. With whipped cream? And a cherry on top. Well, I hardly know how to apologize to you, Doctor. Stuart's been very tired lately. He's been working too hard. That, my dear lady, is only the start. What do you mean? I have been noticing certain symptoms. You have? Is he irritable? Very. And when you accuse him of something that has actually happened, does he deny it? He says I imagined it. Is he secretive? He even locked his clothes closet. Locked his clothes closet? What a 
a wonderful idea. I think I'll try it myself. I beg your pardon. Oh, nothing, nothing. Uh, uh, one point more. Uh, <clears throat> he has an unreasoning dislike for strangers. Oh, yes, he has. Why, only five minutes after you came, he... Oh, I'm I understand. I understand. Is it serious, Doctor? Well, it could be melancholia. But before I diagnose, I would have to have a complete report on his sleeping habits. If he snores, I want to know how many per minute. If he talks to sleep, I want to know that too. If he rolls over, I must know the exact time. Do you think you can do it? I'll have to do it. Good, good. Then I'll be able to tell you more about it in the morning. <laughs> Nothing. Oh. Oh. Good night. Oh. What's the matter? I almost forgot to put down it. You asked me a question. Huh? Oh. Good night. Julie, will you please stop staring at me? I wasn't staring at you. Well, what do you call it? I just happened to be looking in your direction, that's all. Oh, well, go to sleep. Good morning. Good morning. What's for breakfast? Waffles and bacon. No, no bacon. But it's your favorite Sunday morning breakfast. Haven't we any sausage? No. Well, then, just serve the waffles, but please, as a special favor to me, no bacon. But why not bacon? Because I don't want to get into an argument with Dr. Bertoldi. have to go into a big explanation every time you don't want something around this house. Good morning, Doctor. Good morning. Breakfast will be ready in a minute. Oh, I'm content. But you, my friend, seem to have a complaint. Oh, it's nothing. Sometimes June gets a little stubborn. You must realize, Mr. Irwin, that it isn't all stubbornness. Mm -hmm. Your wife is a sick woman. June's sick? Oh, she never felt better in her life. So it may seem to you. But to the trained eye, there are definite symptoms of the beginning of schizophrenia. Oh, now look, Doctor. Don't you have been aware of how often she yawns? Have you been aware that she has been watching you in your sleep? Why, no. Oh, exactly. That suspicious attitude is one of the definite and early symptoms of schizophrenia, which you undoubtedly know as a split personality. Oh, now, wait a minute. My daughter's vicious. My wife's a schizophrenic. What's the trouble with me? Nothing. Nothing at all. You're remarkably well integrated. What a melancholic. I don't know what's the matter with me. Oh, stew your breakfast. What am I thinking of? Oh, never mind. I'm not hungry. Mr. Irwin, then? Where is he? In his study. Hello, Stu. Hello, Ed. Where's Dr. Patoli? In the living room. No, he's not. Well, he was. <laughs> sure he is. Okay, I'll go and talk to him. Uh, just a minute. Yeah. Ed, this has been a great inconvenience, and I want to be sure that at least we get the extra bus for the children out of it. Stu, don't you trust me? Yes, I trust you, but I want you to give me a letter definitely promising us the bus. I couldn't do that. Oh, now, Ed, you promised it to me. 
I said I would extend my best efforts to see that the school got it. No letter, huh? Mm, I just couldn't do it, Stu. Okay. <laughs> he fell in the well and drowned. <laughs> I beg your pardon? I'm sorry to disturb you, but Mr. Irwin said Dr. Bertoldi was here. You, uh, know Dr. Bertoldi? Well, I don't exactly know him, but I've met him a couple of times. I met Harvey. The good people of this town elected me mayor by a majority of over 67 and 5 eighths percent. Well, well, well. How do you do? I'm Dr. Patoli's assistant. Oh, how do you do? Mm hmm. Uh, would you, uh, look at this? Remember, Dr. Bartoli is here. I am Dr. Bartoli. You are Dr. Bartoli. And you will do exactly as you are told. Do you understand? Yes. You will do exactly as you are told. Seems to me I better start packing. Do exactly as I am told. I'm sorry, Ed. I was sure that Dr. Patoli was here. He is here. Hmm? Hello, Ed. Stu, yeah. Harry and Adele are coming over later to meet the doctor. Well, I hope they enjoy it. Why have you taken such an unreasoning dislike to him? I haven't taken a dislike to him at all. Stuart, please tell the truth. The truth? Sure, I appointed Pete Beggs town marshal. He doesn't make a good marshal, but he controls 50 votes. Mm hmm And I appointed Sam Denton treasurer. What if he isn't all right? There are 18 adult voters in the Denton family. Complaints about my paving the road at the north edge of town. Got to improve the property values for people out there, too. I ought to know I own half of the north edge of town. And as for the new sewers, what if they did cost... Are you leaving, Dr. Bertoli? Yes, Mrs. Irwin. I received an emergency call. Fine, fine. I'm expecting a taxi. But what about your lecture? My patients come first. This requires a quick diversion. You will kiss Mrs. Irwin. Say something nice to him before he goes, dear. Nice? Dr. Bertoli, I'm sorry that you're leaving. Oh! 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 oh. Dad! Oh. Dad, stop that! I can't! Oh! Oh! Ed! You stop that now, Ed! I've got him, Doctor. Gosh, he's dangerous. Oh! You've got the wrong man. But, Doctor, he... That's Mr. Lewis over there. Hello, Doctor. Did you have a nice sleep? Let go of that man. Are you ready to leave, Lewis? Yes, Doctor. But... I'm sorry, Mrs. Irwin. I am Dr. Bertoli. This man is one of my patients. Oh. Let's go now, Lewis. Something for you, Doctor. And Mrs. Irwin, don't forget to count the snores. <laughs> I still think we ought to take you, too. Get <laughs> away. <laughs> Mr. Irwin? Oh, uh, yes. Yeah. I hope nothing serious has happened. Oh, no, everything's quite all right, Doctor. Good day. <laughs> oh. Who helped me? I did. You? What for? You were kissing June and you wouldn't stop. Kissing June? It's understandable, but not acceptable. Oh, brother. I think you were hypnotized. Hypnotized? Did I say anything I shouldn't have? Oh, no, you just mentioned the town marshal, the treasurer, and the sewer system. I am in trouble. Oh, no, after all, Ed, I don't think anyone would want to make trouble for a fellow who always keeps his promises. School bus for the kids? No, I wouldn't want you to connect one with the other. Okay. <laughs> Daddy! Huh? They just took that nut away. Oh, you knew he was unbalanced? Sure. I knew that from the very beginning. But how, darling? 
Well, anybody knows that Shakespeare was the one who wrote Shakespeare. Thank <laughs> you.